The beginning of this week's Torah portion, Tazria, can offer us some ancient insights into some of the contemporary debates about gender identity and sexual orientation. The Parsha starts out with the words, Isha ki tazria v'yalda zachar, often translated as, if a woman becomes pregnant and gives birth to a male child. But everywhere in the Bible where the word pregnancy is mentioned, they use the root he resh he, familiar to us in the word herayon, pregnancy. Only in this case do they use the root zayin resh ayin, zera, seed, and they use it in the causative, active form, tazria. The only other place in the Bible where this form is used is in the Genesis creation story on the third day. Esev mazria zera, grass spreading seed. This peculiar use of the word didn't escape commentators throughout the ages, ages particularly because um, spreading seed is a male sexual attribute. In Greek mythology and philosophy, for example, uh, you, you have men being the uh, active and causative agent in sexual reproduction, and women are passive, uh, merely the medium in which offspring grow. This launches a bizarre discussion in Vayikra uh, Rabba, the Midrash, uh, between two Talmudic sages. Rabbi Shmuel Bar Nachmani claims that human beings were originally created and androgynous, having both male and female attributes. Rabbi Shimon Ben Lachish, uh, Resh Lachish, responds that in fact human beings were created two-faced, uh, with their facing op male and female facing uh, in opposite directions. And God cut them in two. And Reish Lakish claims that the word Sela, which is often called Adam's rib, out of which Eve was created, was actually just his side. And God sliced the side in two. This midrash is borrowed directly from Plato's uh, uh, Dialogue on Love, the Symposium. Uh, in the Symposium, Aristophanes describes uh, human sexuality uh, through a myth, uh, a myth in which humans were created as monsters, having two heads, four legs, four arms, and two sets of genitalia. They came in three types, female-male, male-male, and female-female. The gods, fearing the power of this monstrous creature, decided to cut them in two and make them walk upright. But the cut in two creatures still one half longed for the other half. And in the case of the female males, uh, they became heterosexual. But in the case of the male males and the female females, they became homosexuals. The rabbis in the Midrash reframe this in a way that's much more familiar to us. If, as Rabbi Nach, uh, Shmuel Bar Nachmani, you claim that people are created androgynous with male and female attributes, then basically uh, our, our gender identities and sexual uh, orientations are pliable, formed by cultural and psychological influences, uh, and possibly transformed or changed by technology. If, like Reish Lakish, you think that we were sliced in two, then men and f women are essentially the other to each other, very, very differently, and yet have a longing for completion by reconnecting one to the other. These ancient discussions show up in contemporary debates about gender identity and sexual orientation and have been taken up by both LGBTQ activists on one side and by religious fundamentalists on the other. As Ecclesiastes says, there is nothing new under the sun. Shavua Tov from Shechter.